So he, I woke up with Brandon standing at like an standing with a knife in my doorway. The kids had went to their mothers. Um, it was New Year's Eve, so it's supposed to be a time that was you know wonderful and great and uh, celebration. Um, but uh, we get a phone call and it said, uh, "Have you seen?" You know, she's screaming, "Have you seen the news?" And says that uh, my daughter and my son have been attacked. And so, at first, you don't want to believe something like that, you know. Um, the night before, like, I guess everything happened, um, Brandon was sitting on the bed and he told me he loved me. And I, I, I saw myself loving him at one point. He was the only kind of stepdad that my mom, like, ever dated that I was like, okay, maybe I could love him one day. But I've only known him for a couple of months, so I didn't want to say it back at that point. So on that morning, they called my son in the back room and he um, attacked him with a knife. He had stabbed him over and over again. Uh, my son was stabbed 87 times. And the only reason why I know that number is because it was the number that they gave me at the at the uh, funeral home. Um, after after attacking Dylan, he went into the living room and then, uh, no, I, he actually went into Lisa's room and uh, started attacking Lisa. All I remember like he, is him running after me with a knife and I'm like, thinking in my head, like, is this a dream? What is happening? Like, I'm so confused. And then he started, like, cutting me. And um, I remember squirming and, like, trying to get him away from me. And um, he started cutting really, really fast. And so I laid there, like, in the floor and acted like I wasn't, like, alive. You know, I stopped breathing. And um, he went out the doors. And so I ran out the uh, that door to try and like leave. And he slammed me against my grandma's bed that was sitting in the living room and stabbed, stabbed me really hard in my side. And um, my mom ran after him and told him to stop hurting her baby. And I remember her standing there like yelling, babe, stop, babe, stop. And I ran out the um, back door and I was kind of surprised that I could get out the back door because you can never get out that door without um, like some kind of like tool to like, you know, twist it and open it. And um, I opened it like bleeding out. And that was kind of the first sign that God wanted me to stay alive, you know, that he had a plan for me. Um, and I ran to the neighbor's house and was pounding on the door and I really just wanted someone to answer and no one would answer the door. And right as I sat down and thought like my life was over, um, some people showed up and they came um, and one of, and the girl held my neck so I wasn't gonna bleed out. I had already heard that my son was probably dead and so at this point I just asked where my kids were. I wanted to know where my kids were. Um, they finally told me where Elisa was and she was at the hospital. I prayed and prayed and prayed because I'd, I you know I'd already come to the realization that Dylan was gone. Um, my son was gone because I'd heard that in the news and nobody would tell me where he was. And I remember just begging God, like, listen, like, I don't know why you had to take Dylan, but please, God, don't take her too. She eventually got her tube out, and I remember that being probably the most heartbreaking moment was, uh, you know, having to sit and tell Lisa, listen, your mom and Dylan didn't make it. And I didn't want to believe it. I was like, no, they didn't. Like, you guys told me they were fine. Like. They're fine. Because while we loved God, we literally had no idea what to tell somebody at yeah. this. Like, how do you tell somebody th that just went through that why your family didn't make it? Well, and she kept saying during it, too, that I think I saved them. I think I saved them. Like I said, I wasn't really close to my mom. So, like, I obviously missed her. But um, my brother, on the other hand, like, he was truly probably my best friend. Um, I remember just crying and bawling because I didn't want my little brother to be gone. And um, I remember um, thinking it was my fault because I could have saved him. I could have saved my mom. Um, and I didn't, like, I'm the reason they're gone. And uh, I remember blaming God for it and I didn't want anything to do with God. I didn't want anything to do with being a Christian. Like, there was nothing. Oh, I remember laying in bed and thinking about it's just the horrible things that uh, that I wanted to do, that I wanted to do. The man that took my son and hurt my daughter, it gets to 
the point where I'm yelling at my kids, yelling at the wife, yelling at everybody because I'm mad. I'm angry at what happened, and and it's never the person that causes the damage that gets to feel that. It's always the people around you that feels it. So, you know, I was I was an addict my whole life, and here I am. I've turned my life over to God, and I've I've try to do better and I've started and I, I am I'm doing a whole lot better um, and then something like this happens and so naturally you go back to being an addict I mean that's what the world tells us is naturally we go back to being an addict and we go back to doing the things that we know because um, because that's what we're good at it's what's easy Meanwhile, sitting there saying, God, why did you let this happen? And I also remember you know, him saying, listen, don't touch alcohol, don't touch pills because you're so hurt right now that if you, if you were to possibly start any of that, it'll never end. And so I remember God, and I know it was God. I remember, only God could you know, be able to reason with me in that time. Eventually I prayed about it enough that God's like, listen, you gotta let this go. And so I did. And I laid in my bed one night and I prayed for Brandon. I prayed that he would find salvation and that I would be able to find forgiveness for Brandon. And God gave it to me. He's, it, it, was, it was a process and it took time. But God definitely gave it to me. We'd stopped altogether going to church. And I remember just, we could feel it, like yeah. things that were changing and we were like, separating, moving away, and we were like, we've got to find where our church home is now. Like, we've got to get back in church, and here's the deal, we're just gonna pour ourselves into it, into God so much that the enemy will be afraid to attack us right, again, right, or absolutely. if he does, that there's no yeah. way that he'll break us next time, ever. And so we had some friends of ours reach out, and... We started going to the well. Um, I remember the first time I went to the well, we were absolutely against it. <laughs> so we walked in there, and like automatically I could feel like all the warmth of the people and like how much the people actually cared about you and how much they didn't judge you. I like remember it like automatically changing my life and like him saving me completely and uh, like God being there for me. And that's when I truly realized that God was the reason like I stayed alive. And like for me, whenever people say like God saved me, like I say that like he saved me not only like mentally, but he physically saved me because he is the reason I am still standing. You know, God just started blessing us. He blessed us with a you know peace, peaceful heart, peaceful mind. And even though all this hurt and, and all this tragedy has happened, um, there's so much that good that God has used it for. You know, I feel like the devil wanted to tear our family apart. Uh, and that's what he does. He kills, steals, and destroys. And he wanted to destroy us um, and so he attacked us, but God has taken that and he has, it's not just our family going to church on Sunday anymore, it's its our surrounding family as well, meaning, you and know. And just people that we are able, that to, reach able to, reach to reach out to. Yeah, so uh, he didn't get his way <laughs> and he's not gonna win, so. Uh, like he's, he's the only reason I'm like sleeping today, the only reason like I'm not having like suicidal thoughts like I used to. Like I'm not against him and I want to be for him and I want like I want to be there. While we still have trauma from what happened to our son and some some emotions, um, I don't think those ever go away. But through Dylan's actual death, we have been able to come to life as a family. I think that uh, I think that life has a new definition now. So Dylan's death has definitely brought a lot of life into our house, into our home, and to the people around us. I know, I know that he's up in heaven, and I know that he's having a wonderful time, better than anything we could possibly have here. And I know that, uh, I know that I hurt, but he doesn't. And one day I'm gonna get to reunite with him, so.